Hi, it's Barry Lebo. What happens when you have to downsize or clean out an estate, get rid of furniture? Today, I'm at the furniture bank. For years, I've been sending people to the furniture bank. They come, they pick up the stuff. Today, I actually want to go and see the process, what they accept, uh, what they won't accept. So let's go inside in the furniture bank and let's meet the people who are behind us and see what the furniture bank does with your used goods. So Katrina, tell me, what, what, what's your name and what's your role? My name is Katrina Delaney and I'm the community manager here at Furniture Bank. And how long have you been here? I've been here for five weeks. Five weeks? Five weeks. I came, I drank the Kool-Aid and I couldn't leave. Oh, that is so nice because you just gave us... Now, just so anybody watching now, um, we just had a tour yep. and I'm overly impressed. So we're going to be seeing how many square feet here? We have a 30,000 square foot warehouse here. And it gets emptied every day. It's full at 9 o'clock in the morning and it's empty by 4 p.m. So this piece that I'm looking at, just before we get into everything else, I'm yes. fascinated by this piece. And this, if you can just zoom in here for this chair, this is, your your studio has refurbished all this yeah. and you take, I hate to say the word junk, but let's say very used furniture and this is the type of stuff you're creating from some of it. Well, I think we have a philosophy around here that nothing gets wasted, everything gets used, everything has a purpose and can be repurposed. So when we have items that aren't picked up by our clients and maybe are badly damaged, we have we use our other social enterprises to try to fix those items and get them back out into the community. So we have a shop studio program. We'll take pieces like this, we'll repair them, turn them into customized works of so art, really one of a kind pieces. Beautiful piece. And then we'll sell them and the money from that will be funneled back into the charity so that we can continue to do the good work that we do. At the same time, we're helping people develop skills and be reemployed. So you've got now how many charities? We're one charity, which you're is the one. Furniture Bank, the, yes. And your tax receipts, you give tax receipts. We we'll give. talk about that in a yes, second. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay, so I have been sending people for years, call the Furniture Bank, get them to pick up the furniture. Yes. They don't realize there is a fee for a truck that's with right. two people minimum to come out and pick up the furniture. That's right. Okay, and the fee is necessary because there is a truck That's and two right. people. So I think there's sometimes is an assumption out there that charities like Furniture Bank or all charities are funded by the government, but that's not entirely the case. In our case, we're a social enterprise, so we run our own projects, we run our own shops, and we, we generate the, the income to do the work that we do in the charity. So we have to pay for those trucks and pay for the, the staff and the, this operation so that we can make sure that we do the good works that we do for our clients who come through But your here. fees are moderate. I mean, they're not Absolutely. very expensive. No, I, they're not. They're I on the lower end of the, of the market and you get a charitable tax receipt for the oh, value now of Now stop furniture. right there. So pricing. Yes. So if you've got, for instance, a dining room set, a sofa, how do you figure out what the tax receipt should be? We have a list that we've been using for a long time and we just sort of match it up with that and uh, price accordingly and then provide a charitable tax receipt for the value of the total. But so therefore, if you pay for the truck, mm -hmm. your tax receipts three, four times greater than what you paid to have the truck come on. Uh, well, it depends on the volume of your furniture, but absolutely, generally, you're going, you're volume, going, to, do, of course. You're going yes. to do very well with your tax Now, you surprised me with something, something I did not know until I got here this morning. You won't take cribs. Yeah, there's certain items that, that uh, first of all, are just difficult because there are regulations around cribs, around how the bars are spaced and this and that. So for uh, it's really a safety issue. We wouldn't want to put anything on the floor that could cause any harm. So um, over time, if regulations change or if we have the capacity to um, to be really on top of that stuff, that could change. But for now, it's not something. And of course, I, I knew coming in, king-size mattresses are a luxury right. item. Yeah. They're very, just you have to discard them, that's Baby all. Baby car seats, things like that, we just can't accept Oh, really? Them. Same Baby. thing, there are regulations. The regulations yeah, change. safety regulations, nothing to do Unless with it was all in the package, all boxed and all brand new, right? If it had been unopened, well, if we had donations, it might be different from like- Did you get that? Uh, we do Brand have, new? Well, we have relationships with um, with corporate partners who d do donate items to us. So, for example, um, are some of our mattresses that we have here that come from Andy and come from uh, Sleep Country Canada, and those are those are being obviously thirty day returns. And um, again, that's a highly regulated area, but we we do take mattresses like that because our our clients have nothing. I'd like to let's go show people yes. how big thirty thousand square feet of furniture Absolutely. is. Absolutely, after you. Okay.
So it's so funny. I said to you, let's come over and talk near that beautiful blue couch. Mm -hmm. And that was like, we went into one room, come out, and the blue couch is like gone. How fast does all this stuff go? At 9 o'clock in the morning, this warehouse is full. And usually by 4 in the afternoon, it's virtually empty. That is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So now, mom and dad have had furniture in their house. Let's look at it, that aspect. Yes. They've had the furniture 35, 40 years. Absolutely. And instead of it going to some landfill yep. or going wherever, it's getting reused to another family. It's getting reused. To Isn't that a fascinating? Reused. It's not unwanted, but it's unwanted by the family who's, who's donating it. This is furniture that somebody wants and somebody will actually love. Yes. Um, and they'll be grateful to have it. And it will have a whole new life. And what a great story, you know, this piece will have to tell or this piece will have to tell in another 30 years. That is, and then, of course, when these people, when it's their turn, they're new immigrants to Canada, they get established, they want new stuff, it all comes back here again. It all comes back here again. Do you ever recognize pieces? Uh, no, I haven't recognized any pieces, <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't imagine that it would be impossible. I imagine it does happen, and I think that, and if it was really damaged, of course, we would try to repair it and give it a whole new life through the shop studio. Now, that was something else we found here today is, and um, the shop, and I don't want to get people in the pictures, um, they restore, and they're also doing, um, making certain pieces into pieces of art. Yep. There's some gorgeous, I mean, it's like a guild. It is a guild. Uh, they turn them into sort of customized art pieces and we can we can sell them and then funnel the money this, from the social enterprise back into the charity. Wow. And it actually um, leaks into our annual charitable uh, fundraising event, which is the Chair Affair, where we get some of Toronto's top designers who will come through here. They'll each select a chair that hasn't been picked up by a client or is too damaged. They take those chairs away, they design them, and then at our large event in November, I we, didn't know auction anything about those, this. we auction them off. And so you get the Jane Lockhart's coming in here and they're like, here's my chair, I'm gonna auction it off and we funnel that back in. So we get some really, really cool things created out of that. Now, let's just, just to wrap this up, <laughs> Furniture Bank started, if, I, if I'm correct, a nun, a sister, sister had an idea. Yes. And this idea more from one single little building, one little truck, mm -hmm. to this huge organization today. Absolutely. How many families do you think you serve a year? Uh, well, we have, uh, we've kept 52,000 tons of furniture out of landfill. Holy cow. We have helped over 1,200 families, about 300 a week. So uh, actually- 300 a week. Yeah, 300 a week would be more of an accurate. That's, that's, that's amazing, so, so more that's than astounding. 12, pardon me, so it's 12,000 families a year. Yeah. yeah. That is astounding. And how, how, what year does it start? Did it start? We started in 1998. Okay. We have 10 trucks today. And this 30,000 square foot warehouse, and I don't think that, um, we'll, I think we're bursting at the seams here. So we'll have to see where we go from here. Last but not least, this is Toronto based. Any any options to, like, any ideas to move out of Toronto, like expand to other areas? I think the reality is that um, furniture scarcity is an issue in every community in this country. In Toronto alone, there are over 100,000 families who are waiting for yeah. some kind of furniture. And what happens is we get people placed into social housing. They go into those places and they shut the door. You don't see what's behind the door. And what's behind the door is nothing. And, and so it's an issue that people don't know anything about. They don't know that kids are sitting on the floor with no cups and saucers. So we don't think that this is a problem that can be solved overnight, but we do believe that furniture scarcity is something that's absolutely solvable. Furniture there, people there, and we are the group that will connect them. And so there are other furniture banks, and we will probably over time connect to them, share with them our infrastructure, our model of how we operate, and maybe do more business together. The end goal is to make sure that there isn't a person in this country who can't go into their place and sit. So what you're saying is to you, what I'm listening, I'm hearing you, this isn't just a job for you, this is a labor of love. It absolutely is, because it's we've got newcomers to Canada, we have refugees, we have women and children who are transitioning mm -hmm. from abuse shelters, starting their lives over again, people who are transitioning out of homelessness. This is their second chance. This, These are people who've been in some way, shape or form traumatized and who are taking another chance at life and all we have to do is help them have some sort of dignified place through which they can begin this journey. And But what a great place to be, right at the beginning of something new.
I agree with you so much because I've been encouraging my, all my clients for years, the furniture bank, the furniture bank, the furniture bank. Yes. And a lot of my clients have been donating here. This is the first time I physically come and I came myself to follow the truck. Yes. I've never followed the truck. I, I am overly impressed. I think You've done you a great job. I want to shake your hand. Thank I really you very do. Much. I well, really well, thank did. Thank you for all the work that you've done for Furniture Bank. See, because people aren't aware. They see the furniture go in the truck, and it, and but the story is just starting for that piece of furniture. And that story of that piece of furniture is something that's the beginning of a story for a family. And how lucky am I that I get to see that and that you got to saw it today. You, you saw, look what happens when I send furniture here. And the other thing is, of course, we're doing this on a um, um, sort of a, um, a fixed shoot here. Mm -hmm. There are people, as we're doing this, people are around us. We're not putting them in the picture, into the video, um, who are here to pick furniture. Absolutely. And I notice, and they can pick what they want, and people are helping them. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a fabulous day. It's a heart, it's, this is a heartwarming moment. I love this. My first day here, um, I was asked to just pair up with a volunteer and go work the floor. Right. Which is generally not part of my job. So I was paired up with a family and I walked through and I noticed that over here where there's mirrors, um, the mom that I was with was looking at two of the mirrors and one of them was sort of a little more roughly used and the other one was a little bit ornate. And she kept touching the really, really nice one. And her husband and her were putting a sticker on the one that wasn't as nice. And I said, but you like that one. She goes, it's too nice. And I said, it's not too nice for you. If that's the one you want, then take it. And she was like, really? And I said, yeah, really, Aww. take it. We put the sticker on it. And I think to myself, that lady is going to have that mirror, I bet you, for the rest of her life. And every time she looks at it, she's going to remember that she got, it's not junk. She got something nice here. And sometimes it's hard for us to persuade them to take the nice stuff. It's okay. It's here for you. Wow. That's, that's a heck of a story. You know, people have to... You want them... We're all deserving, and they don't all feel deserving. So it's part of, part of walking through the process with them is letting them know, this is yours. So if you're privileged enough to have what to give, then you should give so that people can have that happiness of your pieces. They are going to love your piece possibly more than you ever did. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. It's You're hard welcome. it's hard rendering. It really I know, is. I know, I know. I'm getting a I'm getting a little <laughs> this is this is not the way I thought it'd end up today. I'm getting, was, I, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting you're tearing me up. Good. I really think this is great. Because Thank you so much. You've done great work for the furniture bank and we really appreciate it. Thank Every you so bit. much.